This picture is the epitome of who I am today. It represents everything I would learn, everything I would experience, and everything I would love. On the left is my oldest brother, Fernando, and on the right, my other brother, Jonathan. Of course, that's me in the middle, and while I wasn't wielding a Wii remote like they were, I was just as immersed in the world of Super Mario Brothers as they were. But why should you care about this? Why should you care about just another group of siblings enjoying one of the greatest treasures of the early 2000s? But most importantly, why should you care about two little plumbers jumping from pipe to pipe who have yet to make a single repair? Because this is the world that has inspired curiosity and excitement, not to mention it's one of the most successful industries in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic. It's true, if you look at the game console shelves for Xbox, PlayStation, and Nintendo Switch, you'll see that they resemble the appearance of toilet paper shelves back in March of this year. But it's the gaming industry that's shaped me into who I am today. It's taught me that growth should be a mindset rather than a single action. But if I were to boil this down just to one single lesson, I would be doing you a great injustice. So allow me to walk you through my perspective, a tutorial, if you will. Like movies, TV shows, music, and books, video games can be divided based on their genre. There's a particular genre that has a reputation for immersing players and creating a lasting impact after the game has been completed. Role-playing games, or better known as RPGs, have you step into the shoes of a character or characters within a game. But by being the main character, you subject yourself to extraordinary circumstances, many of which are like and unlike the world you're familiar with. When you familiarize yourself with your new role, you realize that the way the game is structured is actually modeled based on how we live our lives today. What better way to sink hours of your life into a game than to get something valuable out of the experience itself? With this in mind, I've established a process in which you can use to develop your personal growth over time using RPGs. Rise, a cycle of phases that allow us to grow and ultimately level up to be the hero of our story. The cycle is composed of self-reflection, self-improvement, self-service, and self-exhilaration. It revolves around the idea of connecting virtual experiences and real-world applications to benefit you. That's not to be confused with the idea that the world revolves around you, because it doesn't. If you stumble upon a lesson that doesn't apply to you, then you may end up distorting it just so it can suit your needs, but it contradicts the purpose of it entirely. Instead, use the knowledge from the experience to help others and continue to build your connections. These connections between games and reality can be made in a really unique and abstract way, and you must keep an open mind in order to understand what you have to gain from the experience. It's important that we recognize that truth is not an end, but a beginning. It's scary to get to know who you are as a person. All of your flaws and your fears, everything about you that's good or bad rises to the surface. And it has to make you wonder sometimes what it would be like if you were someone else. But that's why self-reflection is so important. You don't think about who you are or what you looked like in the mirror this morning when you're immersed as one of these characters in an RPG. You think about what their life is like what their world is like, how do they act within it, who are their friends, who are their enemies. You get to ask questions about things like, who am I, what do I do, and what do I do to become better. Self-improvement is incredibly important, but you have to self-reflect first before you have any room to improve. In a game that's known for its world of magic and conflict between mages and templars, Dragon Age Origins allows you to choose who you become in the fictional country of Ferelden. You get to choose between six different backstories. A Dalish Elf, City Elf, Dwarf Commoner, Dwarf Noble, Elf or Human Mage, or Human Noble. Just like us, each have their own unique backstory as to how they became who they are. But what a lot of people don't know is that when you choose one origin story, the other ones you do not choose will not survive the events of the game. You find that you are rescued by a Grey Warden named Duncan, and it is his intervention that allows you to survive your change of circumstances. In exchange, you yourself become a Grey Warden, a warrior who is devoted to fighting the forces of the Blight and its Archdemon. You learn about this world and your place in it just as you may in real life. It's scary to explore what the world is like, especially if you don't know yourself well enough to put yourself out there. Once you learn about yourself, you can now begin your journey to equip yourself with the tools that will allow you to craft yourself into the person you wish to become. This brings us to self-improvement and the idea that too few invested in authority possess the courage to alter their course. People fear the appearance of weakness, but in times like this, we can't afford to be weak. 
The good thing is we have options as to how we choose to move forward. Greedfall does a great job in explaining who you are and what your job is, but it's up to you to strengthen yourself and your companions enough to find the cure for the blight that plagues your land, the Malachor. Whether it is a curse or a poison, the Malachor is believed to have originated from the natives of the fictional island of Tirfredi. While you gallivant around this island in the pursuit of a cure, you find new resources, allies, and companions that will help you become more prepared to fight the creatures on Tirfredi. However, as the legate of the merchant congregation, you find that there are just as many enemies as there are allies, and it's your job to forge alliances with little to no hope in store. Your way with words will allow you to open up new opportunities to strengthen the position of your congregation and also with your companions. If you ignore the people who travel with you, you will grow apart, and this distance may cause them to leave your party. The juggling of finding a cure, empowering your faction, and forming friendships will become difficult, but it forces you to prioritize your missions just as you would a to-do list of daily tasks. The more tasks you complete, the greater the odds of your success in your future endeavors. This may also spark an interest in becoming a completionist, someone who plays a game with the intention of completing every single task within it. It's meticulous work, but you need to realize that the word meticulous actually comes from the Latin root for metis, which actually means fear. So in this case, meticulousness infers that you're afraid of missing something. And while it does benefit your character by exposing them to new experiences, you, the person in front of the screen, experience anxiety and sometimes even obsessiveness because you know that your job is never entirely done. But the important part of all of this is that you grow accustomed to experiencing new situations, which tends to be a major barrier for some people in our world. People of all ages can experience social challenges, especially when they're caused by ADHD, autism, OCD, anxiety, or depression. While these challenges may seem like an impossible obstacle to overcome, video games that replicate growth in various social environments where your character is forced to become stronger, help others, and restore order can allow people to communicate with the world around them in several different ways. It's not about living vicariously through others, it's about taking on a different form and reaping the benefits of virtual growth. Now we move on to self-service and the idea that you can't always control how people will act, but you can control your response. In the end, that's all that really matters. Commander Shepard in the Mass Effect series embodies the idea of choice and creating your own path. As you play as a male or female Shepard, you have the option to make choices that can hurt or help you in your mission to save the Milky Way galaxy. You have the choice to align yourself with good or evil. But your definition of good or evil ultimately depends on your perspective. In the first Mass Effect game, Shepard encounters Saren, a rogue specter who has seemingly aligned himself with the Reapers, an intergalactic threat to all living beings. These mysterious Reapers are found to be a force that leads to the extinction of civilizations every 50,000 years. But where you seek a means to destroy the Reapers, Saren sees a means to synthesize the Reapers with all living beings as well as all artificial intelligence. While this may sound like an awful idea just because of the menacing reputation that the Reapers have, that's because that's the perspective that you're conditioned to maintain. In the midst of the conflict, Saren presents Shepard with a question. Is submission not preferable to extinction? The game gives you a moment to briefly consider his point. Isn't retaining part of yourself as an individual and as a member of your race more important than dying because of an overwhelming force? If you don't already know, the world is not as black and white as it seems. Of course, ideas like revenge may try to contradict this. An eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth, but who does this really serve? In the search for vengeance, you become ignorant of the implications of your actions. After all, does an eye for an eye not make the world blind? It's these kinds of questions that make our world and these fictional worlds such a beautiful place to explore. We get to decide how these questions and their answers ultimately shape us. We get a say in who we become. So it's important that you do not let your fear of the world compromise that. Finally, this leads us to self-exhilaration. There's a peace in knowing that though the world is beyond our understanding, it doesn't need our understanding to function. By learning about ways to improve yourself, by getting to know yourself and by putting in the work to become the best version of yourself, you don't need to understand anything about how the world around you works to achieve the exhilaration you crave. You just learn to take it all in and live your life knowing that you've evaluated all of the possible ways in which you can become the best version of yourself. This is what made The Last of Us such a well-remembered and fairly controversial game duology. 
The last of us is centered around the spread of cordyceps, a fungal infection that originates from ants and has a horrifying reputation for consuming the mind of its host until the host starts producing the fungus from its own tissue. The fungus has mutated to the point where it overcomes humanity and leads to an apocalypse. And while you don't make any specific decisions in regards to your survival of the fungus in the two games, you remember how they impact your story and your character. Like in the other games I've mentioned, you get to see the implications of the story you execute and how it will steer the story in the future. This is a game that forces you to approach things one step at a time in the shoes of Joel and Ellie. It will force you through different painstaking and heartbreaking scenarios, but it also gives you a moment to breathe. With the spoon-fed manner of presentation, you understand what it's like to pace yourself in your daily life. If you're having a rough day and all you feel like doing is brushing your teeth and fixing your bed, there's nothing wrong with that. You're simply just taking things one step at a time. The important part is that you give yourself time to process your experiences, take your victories where you can, and venture back through the cycle of self. So when we take a look back at the cycle, what do you see? Do you see yourself on the journey of finding yourself, like your hero of Ferelden in Dragon Age? Do you find yourself exploring your resources, learning more about how you can better yourself by bettering the people around you, just like the Legate of the Merchant Congregation in Greedfall? Do you imagine yourself making pivotal decisions that determine your nobility or your infamy, like Commander Shepard in Mass Effect? Do you picture yourself relaxing after a long day of survival and endurance, like Joel or Ellie in The Last of Us? Now that you've completed the tutorial, why is it important for you to become more immersed in these worlds? Because they're not unlike the one you live in today. Even with the space travel, use of magic, alien alliances, and mutated creatures, this activity is more than just a computer or a console application. It's about taking an immersive and time-consuming pastime and making it a tool for learning. You will only find wisdom and you seek it. And these worlds, the worlds within your reach, are full of wisdom. With this, I advise you not to dismiss this activity solely because of your age. This world is not as exclusive as it seems. Your kids or grandkids may be more into this than you are, but that's because the gaming industry is targeting them with advertisements for new consoles, games, and accessories. Your opportunity to rise should not be restricted by your own limitations. Your personal development does not have to take place once you rest your hands on a controller or a keyboard, but you should know that it can. You have the opportunity to be the hero of your story by playing as the hero of other stories. So, what kind of a hero will you be?